What's up, everybody? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll come up with my own intro at some point. I'm filming here with my camera's selfie camera to make a really stark contrast because of what I'm going to be doing today. And what I'm going to be doing today is changing this cramped, shitty area into something hopefully less shitty. So let's see here. We got an entire lighting setup from Canadian Studio, I believe. We got a Rode NTG2 so that when I make noises with my mouth, they won't sound as shitty as they sound right now. I'm also ordering some foam so that the ridiculous reverb in this room won't be as apparent, but uh, that's not here yet. I'll go through this gear later. Anyway, so this is the first episode of my YouTube series. So for those of you unaware, this channel is going to be about learning a whole bunch of different skill sets. Uh, one of those skill sets, more of like a meta skill set because I'm going to be making YouTube videos about these things, is how to do YouTube. So I'm going to be taking you guys along the journey of actually how I'm thinking about creating new YouTube videos, and I figure that one of the most important parts is, in, on top of good content and on top of talking about interesting stuff, you need to have something that's nice to look at. And so I'm going to change my normal little desk nook into a proper studio with good lighting so that I can make something unexciting turn into something very exciting. Before I get to that though, a really quick word from our sponsor, which is me, and today's word is anyway. Uh, I'm sure that most of you actually probably say it anyways, that's not actually a word. And so just to like to break the glass for a couple of you guys, uh, yeah, the word is anyway. Anyways is not actually a word. So whenever you catch yourself saying it, and you're probably gonna say it a lot, or you're gonna hear other people saying it, now you know that it's actually wrong, and you're gonna be like, I don't like knowing this because now everything seems wrong to me. Keep listening to me for long enough and you'll learn a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't know that you didn't want to know. BAM! Three days later we're done. Did you know that acoustic foam panels take like a day and a half to, to expand to the normal size? I got them in a package that was super tiny. I took a photo of it and then they expand to this kind of size and I got 24 of them. So that package that I'm showing here, that's 24 of these puppies. Super compressed. Anyway, okay, so let's go through what I'm thinking about here. So I have a... You know what? Actually, I'm gonna film this. Okay, so in front of me here, I have the Sony a6300, and the lens I'm using is a 10 to 18 native Sony lens, uh, 4.0 aperture, I believe. So the lighting that I have here is I have a big softbox key light um, right here. So let's see if I can get a better view. Hopefully, that's a better view. So we have the softbox light key light right here. Um, this is at about a 45 degree angle coming onto my face and it's leaving what I'm hoping to be when I'm facing the camera a little bit of a Rembrandt lighting uh, setup. So that's all of this side of my face is is bright and then I have about a triangle of light right here that's being lit up on my face um, on that side. And so what this does is it gives this shadowy part of my face um, a there's, there's a large lighting contrast between the two sides of my faces and it gives it a three dimensional depth. Um, when you have even lighting so that's both sides of your face is um, lit that you don't get as much depth. And so what I'm trying to create here is an illusion of depth. I don't have much depth to work with here because this room is actually really cramped as you can probably see here. And so I don't have that much to work with. And so any type of lighting techniques that I can do to give myself a three dimensional presence on the camera is gonna help. Um, I have one other light and that is up there. So this is a, this is a hair light slash rim light. For me, it's acting basically as a hair light because it's, what it's doing is, oh here, this is what it's, it's also sort of inadvertently working as a backlight as well. And now that I turned it off, I think that it actually has better light on the back. <laughs> Damn it. Anyway, but what it does though, it creates a very thin outline of light on my body, which separates me from the background. And again, gives a, a bit of that three dimensional presence um, and pops me out of the screen first uh, in comparison to the background. So maybe you can see that now, right? So I have that little bit of that shiny outline on that side of my body and that makes me pop out from the background. So one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to have a really simple setup that I didn't have to move around very often. And I'm also gonna be doing a lot of video editing, music editing, photography editing, like just a whole bunch of stuff on my computer. So it makes sense to have my, um, my filming setup right next to my computer so I can either face right here or I can be sideways and actually use my computer. So either way, it works really nicely. Oh yeah, there's one more set of lights that's really important and that's some LEDs that I put on the back of my desk. I'll show you with the camera. I have them wrapped around the back of my desk there. And so that's giving a little bit of a blue backlight as well. Um, I'm actually ordering another 
bit of these LED strips so that I can put it on this side of the desk as well so I can have a bit of a blue back drop as well for this. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when I color grade this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the shadows in the background more bluish tinge and it's already blue, which is great. And I'm going to make my skin pop out as a little bit more orange, right? And so teals, like blue tealish color, um, is diametrically opposed to orange on a color wheel. So that means on a color scale, they have the most amount of color contrast. And so where black and white, really bright things and really dark things have the most amount of light contrast, things that are opposite on a color wheel have the greatest amount of color contrast. And so if I'm working with a light contrast where my face is really bright and the wall behind me is a little bit darker, mixed with color contrast where my skin is kind of orange and the background is blue, I'm gonna have as much contrast as I can possibly get so that despite the fact that this is just, this is like, I mean, I can touch, I can touch the wall here. Anyway, despite the fact that it's so close, it'll look, it'll, it'll push me forward and, and make me look a little more three, three dimensional. So if you're doing your own setup, I suggest keeping those two things in mind. So the color contrast and the light contrast. So let's see any other details that I can remember. So right now I'm using the video micro as my shotgun mic. Uh, reason why I'm not using the Rode NTG2, which I have right here, is I don't have a proper recording mechanism um, to plug this into. And so I actually have an XLR cable into a 3.5 millimeter cable. And I tried plugging this into the camera, but there's a lot of electrical interference. I'm not sure if it's just because of a really shitty cable or if it's because I'm a moron. Um, I'm not a sound guy. <laughs> I will eventually become a sound guy and I can bring you along the journey that I take as well. But right now, yeah, I don't really know exactly what I'm doing. So that's something that I, that I gotta do. In any case, the Video Micro's audio is surprisingly good. I was doing a comparison between the two and even when I was accounting for the electrical interference that I was receiving on the NTG2, the, the video micro is good. So, I mean, as my two second review for the video micro, it's good, buy it if you want it. It's like 60 bucks or something like that. So, good deal. Uh, what else? So there's a couple other things that you need to keep in mind. I mean, I'm saying this like I know what I'm talking about, but I'm experiencing this right at the moment. When you're talking to a camera, first of all, you gotta get used to talking to a camera. I mean, I'm alone right now and to be able to put on a very sociable type of mood is, I mean, something that I, I think a lot of viewers take for granted based on what they see on YouTube. But yeah, it's kind of like a, a thing you gotta really think about and it's something that you gotta, you gotta put on. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy when there's a lot of people around, you can just get into that social vibe, but doing it alone, it's interesting, it's interesting. Another thing that you gotta think about is what kind of music you wanna play in the background, if you're gonna play any music in the background at all. I tend to find that I have a little bit of a silly personality, which hopefully can come across in the videos that I make. Um, again, it's gonna be a little bit tough getting a, a lot of your personality across into a camera lens which by the way is about this far away. So I'm really close to the camera and it just feels interesting. I'm sure it's gonna feel super natural at some point, but right now it feels, I'll just leave it with interesting. That's a decent enough adjective. I should probably plan these out better. What would I want to know if I were you? I guess one thing that's kind of silly is that I assume there's gonna be like what, a hundred people who are gonna watch this when I first release it. That kind of sucks. You get used to the fact that you're not gonna have a wide audience uh, to begin with, unless you hit some like kind of viral video, which by the way, my running through Barcelona video, sudden, like just somehow got really, really popular. I think I have almost 200,000 views on it now. And I think that's either because people really like the DJI Osmo Mobile and they wanted to see something that was done well with it, um, and or people just really like Barcelona. In any case, <laughs> I think its success is kind of what made me want to make these videos in the first place, so go that video. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's jump into how I am going to edit this in, in post. Okay, so we're gonna jump into Premiere. This is the footage that I just took a second ago, and I'm gonna go through how I color graded it, first and foremost, because that's a question that everybody always asks, always. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off what we have so far. So this is the ungraded footage. So again, I'm using the A6300. The color profile that I'm using in the A6300 is a Cine 2 profile. Um, the first thing that I do, okay, so I add a Lumetri color effect, and let's see what I did in here. So on the Creative tab, I added in a Cine 2 color basic correction LUT. Uh, and the reason why I added this in the creative tab and not in the basic correction tab is that if you add a LUT in the basic correction tab, uh, you can't set the intensity of that LUT. And so I set in the creative tab and then I put it to an intensity of 50. 
Uh, this Cine 2 color is basically just a color correction, like Cine 2 to uh, normal Rec 709 uh, color scheme. I'll probably give you guys a link to that, that LUD as well. I can't remember exactly where I got this. I got this a long time ago, uh, but anyway, it seems to work pretty well. And in the basic correction, like I'm a noob at this, but it works pretty well. So I took the white balance selector and I selected the whites of my eyes and that did an automatic correction um, for the rest of the scene, taking my eyes as a default for, for whiteness. If that was a dumb thing and you know that that's a dumb thing to do, please let me know. Result is pretty nice though. I like the, the look of it. In any case, so this is basically my correction lumetri color. Um, however, I did add a little bit of color grading in this in the color wheels and match area. So I pulled the shadows down into the teal area, just a, just a smidge. And then I pushed the mid-tones into the orange uh, skin tone kind of area right there. And I also pushed the highlights very slightly into that same, into that same region. And then that's all I did for this first Lumetri color. So that was basically just a correction and very slight grade. And then I added a another Colorista instance. I just happened to like using Colorista a little bit more than Lumetri color. color. Um, I, I think I was just using Colorista more often when I was doing my running through videos and whatnot when I was traveling. So anyway, you can use Lumetri color to do the exact same thing because I did do the exact same thing on this one where I just pushed the shadows down into the blues again, mid-tones up into the orange, uh, highlights that pretty much just left the stain the same. I was messing around with these a little bit. The saturation only got bumped up two points there. Um, I added a very slight vignette, uh, so you can see that there. And then ever so slightly just bumped up the, uh, like I nudged the highlights up just a little bit to give my face just a little bit of a likeness contrast bump. For music, music is a tough thing to select for, right? Again, like how do you get your personality across, but also like have a little bit of a, a driving energy. And also you don't want people to really notice the music. And now that I'm talking about it, you're going to, you're going to hear it in the background. Uh, like the type of music that I like listening to is, well, I like listening to a whole bunch of different stuff. Hybrid orchestral, honestly, is my favorite kind of stuff, but that's way too emotional. That's never going to be background kind of music. Uh, EDM also I like quite a bit as just like listening, like easy listening kind of music. But again, that doesn't, I find it doesn't really work as well for background music to YouTube videos. I find it a little bit too up there and annoying. So a genre that I don't really listen to that much, but I feel like it works quite well for background music um, was there was like a jazz and hip hop hybrid kind of thing that kind of, that seems to work kind of well because it's kind of groovy and it just has a little bit of a beat. Um, and then the other one is like this rock sort of, yeah, kind of a rocky kind of kind of tone. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Again, I haven't made the final decision yet, but I think that's what I'm gonna go with this video because I don't know, just kind of like the, the, the vibe it gives. Anyway, I think my setup right here is pretty good. And this puts me in a good position to go on to my next video, which is gonna be the first videography series video. So what I'm gonna be covering in that video is my first few edits and what I learned from them and what I have since learned that I wish that I had known before I made them and uh, sort of the thought process that I went through when I was constructing those. Uh, I'll go into some of the details, um, some of the things that I did right, a lot of the things that I did wrong, and hopefully you guys find that useful for if you wanna get into your, your own first videography projects. If you're not interested in videography, that's fine. You can just wait until my next YouTube one if you're interested in this video or wait until I start a new series. Yeah, I think that's about it. I'm probably gonna be spitballing ideas with myself for uh, what kind of intro that I want to use, what kind of outro that I want to use. When I ha have enough footage, maybe I'll actually make a small clip um, intro. You don't want to make it too long. You also don't want to make it just annoying in any way. Like it just has to be kind of like, well, I'm William, bah. Like my biggest thing, one of the reasons, I mean, you might have noticed that I talk quickly. One of the reasons I don't like wasting people's time, which is kind of ironic because I ramble a lot. So I'm gonna have to like play those two things. I was thinking that I wasn't going to be one of the YouTubers that had a lot of uh, split cuts in their video because I kind of like just going on a, on a talking spree. But then I figured that I'm probably gonna waste people's time a little bit too much if I, if I truly did do that. So yeah, I decided that I'm gonna do little jump cuts. Yeah, if there's any other basic questions that you guys have for, at, for what you think I could possibly be thinking or feeling while starting a new channel, let me know and then I'll put it into the next uh, YouTube series video. And um, if I come up with any cool ideas, then I'll just create the video as soon as I as soon as I have a cool idea or as soon as I've experienced something new or as, as soon as I've reached some particular milestone. We're like, okay, this is cool. It makes me feel a certain way. And I think it'd be cool to share that feeling with everybody else. Until then, I need to come up with some kind of way to end my videos because I don't really have a good idea of how I should do it right now. Bye bye.